Hi, I'm Lars and this is my land. In my land, I get to do pretty much whatever I want. And today I wanna to talk about A Hard Day's Night, the album, not the movie. And does it hold up? And you're gonna listen, cause it's my land. My last few album reviews have been about albums that I cannot stop listening to. This is not necessarily the case for A Hard Day's Night. No disrespect, no problems with the album. I had to listen to it to kind of get acquainted with it in order to do this video is what I'm saying. So when I was going back into a Hard Day's Night, I was going at it with a good familiarity of A Hard Day's Night, the film. I've seen it a handful of times, so I associate the music with the film and blah, blah, blah. So I haven't really listened to the album all the way through, which changes a lot of things because there are tracks on the album that are not in the movie. There are songs that are in the movie more than once. And I was just kind of like, maybe I'm not as aware of this album as I I am with the other ones that I've talked about. So I spent about a week kind of listening to it and I'm still going to just go with today's reactions because I'm still not even sure what all I'm going to say. The thing about A Hard Day's Night though is that it has one of my favorite songs of all time. And I always say that I don't play favorites. I absolutely do. I'm done saying that. It's just such a great song. So we'll talk about that in a second. Welcome to Annoying Memos Land. Beep -a -deep, beep 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 beep. I'm done. Uh, long story short, I've been working on a video essay series on the TV show Lost for a really long time. If I don't mention it in every video that I do, I have to, I will, hang on. I haven't thought of one. Oh yeah. Okay. I got one. And if I don't mention it in every single video, then I will get the last of us. Just pick an ending of any of those episodes. Ow. Like, subscribe, comment, share. All of it helps me so much. And just before we get back into this, I wanted to let you know that the screen tilts and the chair is loud and my eyes are dry. I haven't been crying. It's just the way I look. Now let's go back to my land. A hard day's night. This intro, first off, is pretty rock and roll. I really like that opening. However, it is so cemented with the running scene in my head that I'm just like, I can't pry those two apart. Okay, real quick. A Hard Day's Night was the Beatles' first film and this album, which came out kind of together as a package deal, all right? And if I get that wrong, don't worry. Somebody will correct me in the comments. So just look for the smarter people. The movie kind of followed the Beatles over the course of like 72 hours coming up to a televised performance or something like that. And basically, I, I don't know why I'm explaining this. If you're here, you've seen it, right? Have you not? Okay, if you haven't seen A Hard Day's Night, please comment. I have to know, right? Okay. Anyway, just very much attached to the film in my head. So I can't see one without hearing the other. You know what I mean? And the other way around. That's probably my favorite part of the song. I have to say, listening to this, it does feel... Oh, Jesus. It just don't yell at me. It does feel kind of, I know that they wrote the song overnight, but it feels more commercial to me. It worked really well as like a movie song, but it's kind of like sanitized to me almost. Does that make sense? And I couldn't tell you why I feel that way, really. You know, Paul's vocals are good. You know, the drums are good. It's I don't know why I feel that way. Something is just not hitting for me. But as it goes with the Beatles. As usual, your B is another person's A. Uh. <laughs> of course, anything that is like not hitting by the Beatles is still amazing by any other standard. Okay, so this is something that I was thinking about because the when I'm home part particularly stands out to me. We hear a lot about, especially in these earlier years, the touring years, them talking about coming home or being home or what it's like, just wait till I get home. And I always found that really interesting because in some ways it's definitely them coming back to the UK, like hanging out with their girls and, you know, their other girls and the other girls and each other and that's it. But I think in some ways going home for them was touring. In some ways going home for them was being together and not in some ways, I would say in most ways. And you know what, you know what? I get to say that now cause I know things now. I should have known better. But I love this song. I posted it on my community tab the other day and it got like a crap ton of likes because just the, ah, uh, it's just awesome. You know, <laughs> it's fun. It's a fun song. Ah. Uh. 
I really love this song. This song could make it on like my top 50 Beatles list. Wow, that's a bold statement. <laughs> I don't know. It's good though. <laughs> There you go, John. Get up there, bud. Early in the morning, you know. I'm not 18. Anymore. Love the mouth organ, the harmonica. I'm not the musician, but this is a musician household, and there are more than a dozen harmonicas here. There are so many harmonicas. There's like big ones and bass ones, and they're huge, and... I like this song because it comes off really sweet. It's also pretty forward. It's still John. Of course, this song I can't hear without seeing Patty Boyd go like this with her hair. The instrumentation in this one is interesting, right? Like I didn't look it up because these are the low effort videos. So I didn't look up anything. Usually I would. And I'm just looking right off camera. There is... <laughs> <laughs> the complete Beatles recording sessions. Like, I could just... It's right there. <laughs> this is my shame. If I fell. If I give my heart. This example of John and Paul's harmony is really great. It shows, like, of course, John's voice is great. Paul's voice is great. There is just something very magical about them together, specifically the two of them. If I trust it. I'm having a hard time like stopping and picking parts because I'm just having too much fun like listening to it. I'm sure I have like some crazy like middle distance bitch face, but I just really like this song. So I'm listening to it. I like their harmonies. It's a pretty song. Cause I couldn't stand the pain. It's, I... That's really good. You know, it, that sounds great. It's very different. When she learns we are two. This song is a fun experience if you spend time like following Paul's harmony, you follow John's harmony, it's a different song each time. Um, or your brain will like switch from harmony to harmony, at least mine does. It creates a unique experience for every time you listen to it almost. Great end, great ending. I'm happy just to dance with you. Oh, this song is great. I mean, this song, couldn't get enough of it. Love it. Love George. Love most George songs. I mean, of course, Ringo, the drums in this are so fun. This song is just a party song. It's great. Is Favorite part, of course. The song is such a bop, it's like super fun to listen to. And then the harmonies in the chorus make it like kind of passionate. And you're like, kind of like, oh, you know, hot or whatever. Let's pretend we just don't see his face. It's a jam. It's a jam. There's no debating it. And I love her. It's a Paul song that George stars in. She gives me everything. It's good. That's good. It sounds great. I love the guitar in this. She brings to me and I, love her. I also have this cemented with a hard day's night in my head. I'm gonna have to like pull that video. As long as I have you near me. There's something just very pleasing about the sound of that lyric. You know, a love like ours could never die as long as I have you near me. I don't know if it's the way that they produced his voice or the lyric itself. I just really like it. I mean, it's just, this is a fun, I... Is that a standing bass? I'm not looking it up. Is that a standing bass? Why does it sound like one? Answer me. <laughs> uh, just anticipation of this. Oh my God. No, that's the best part of that song. That's the best part of that song. It's so good, I'm gonna die. <laughs> okay. Can't buy me love. 
I almost get the same vibe from Can't Buy Me Love that I described from A Hard Day's Night. Almost the commercial thing, but there is something different that keeps it from that category, but it's skirting the edge to me. Now, hey, this doesn't mean that A Hard Day's Night doesn't hold up. Of course it holds up. I'm really jamming to it. And like I said, one of my favorite songs is on this album, okay? It's hard to render me speechless. I just don't have the right terms for what I'm trying to describe. Maybe it's just my <laughs> my need to people please is just saying that it's not doing it for me. <laughs> I'm gonna get murdered. I mean, it's it's still like, it's not a hard day's night. It's a good time. It's a fun song. This solo is it's just heavy. This is a rock and roller, you know? My enthusiasm is not coming across. I like this song a lot. I and now that the more I'm listening to it, the more I'm like, maybe it just starts commercial for me and then it gets better throughout the song. I don't know. Anytime at all. All right, listen. So this is also one of my favorite songs. This was on my current repeat playlist. I was listening to this and five other songs for like a while, just them. So I really, really like this song and I had a lot to say about it then and I will link that video, but also I'm <laughs> still gonna talk about it now. I am gonna have to take my contacts out. Hi, um, I've got eye issues. I'll be right back. <laughs> This song does a good job of, if you're feeling sorry and sad and the piano and stuff, that's like dramatic, but also like the drums and everything, they're kind of like high energy. So it's a really interesting song. You know, just listening to that, George's riff going in there was really nice. And the rhythm guitar throughout that is really nice too. I like this song as a bop, but I was just, li I've been listening to it a little bit more right now. I'll cry instead. This is one of those songs that I think I was talking about earlier when I was like, I had to go get familiar with this album. I don't think I remembered that this song existed. And it's, it's kind of fun. It's like a grumpy song from John. Yeah. I like it. I like this song. It's so bratty and it is such a little, whatever that is. It's a fun song. Once again, this is, <laughs> I sound like I'm absolutely slamming this album. I don't like, I'm not. It's just, it's just that I talked about Beatles for sale already and I have feelings about that album. Romantically. <laughs> no, actually the bass is killing it right there. Things we said today. This is a song that's gone the opposite. I really didn't like this song at first and I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna say that I don't like a song. That's how I felt like before. I really like this song now. You say you be mine, girl, it's a well done song. Paul's voice sounds great. The lyrics are so like morose and slow, but the beat is really high and it's it's a fun song. You know, it's a, it's a bop. That's what makes like the Beatles the Beatles is that they tried to do different kind of stuff. Like maybe this will work, maybe this will work. And it worked. Love to hear you say that love is love. Favorite part of the song, obviously. Deep in love, not a lot to say. Harmonies are great. Love it. When I get home. I mean, I mentioned this before, but there's another home thing. This is another pure rock and roller. I mean, it's not like particularly noteworthy, but it's so fun to listen to. I love a good rock and roller. I could listen to this stuff for hours and hours and hours. Uh, listen to that George harmony. Man, this really showcases John's voice just so well to me. To, for me, I just love it. it. Sounds good. It sounds good. I heard somebody say that people didn't like till the cows come home. What's wrong with that? I don't know. I mean, that's a phrase that I used growing up. Like you do something till the cows come home where it's like, you know, whatever, I'll be studying till the cows come home. I love that. Sassy, it's a sassy song, I really like it. 
Maybe it's more noteworthy than I intended to say earlier. I really do. I like this song a lot. You can't do that. Okay, this is the one. This is the one. It's like my favorite song. Listen. Okay. Mm. I tweeted a few weeks ago that I was like, Am I going to get canceled because I like the bad Beatles songs, which I meant specifically, you can't do that and um, run for your life. And obviously people were like, there's no bad Beatles songs. That's not what I meant. You know what I meant was like toxic relationships, blah, blah, blah. And like, it's kind of like domestic abusey. Okay, listen, I love these songs. I obviously don't love the, like that message. Okay. But like the, the song is so good. It's so good. I can't handle it. Yeah. Oh, it's too good. It's too good. Mm. Cancel me, man. I'm never gonna get mad about hearing George in a harmony. Does that have something to do with this being one of my favorite? Who knows? We don't. We don't need to look into it too much, do we? <laughs> This is really showcasing John's voice. Really, really, really. John's voice, I've talked about it like three videos in a row now, worth it. It sounds great here. This is exactly what shows that twist and shout, that everything. It is so different from other songs on this album. You know what I mean? It's like really there, it's really there. See what I'm saying? I'll be back. Now, unfortunately for I'll Be Back, in my heart, it almost, it almost gets Penny Lane syndrome of like coming right behind a song that I really, really love. But lucky for I'll Be Back, it's fucking great. So it's fine. It is just not, it's not going to be, you can't do that. But I really like I'll Be Back too. Ooh, Ooh the rhythm guitar in this is really, really interesting. I really like this. Yes, I'm the one who wants you. Oh, 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 oh. I'll be back won me over with the lyrics. I used to be a really lyrical person and I'm not so much anymore, but this one really got me. As a teenager, I very much like struggled with some of this stuff, the insecurities of, you know, young love and you're like, you're like, do you like me? Do you really like me? I ran away from you, that you would want me to. That line specifically, I thought that you would realize that if I ran away from you that you would want me to, but I got a big surprise. This like song really resonates with me now, even as an adult. Like you've got better things to do than to break my heart again, but I'm gonna come back anyway. And you know, this reminds me of um, Phineas's song, Break My Heart Again or something like that. It keeps you on the hook. It's just so relatable. <laughs> Great, great way to end that album, honestly. Obviously, A Hard Day's Night holds up. It's great. I really enjoy it. Is it my favorite Beatles album? No, it's just not. But it is such a fun ride. Of course, it feels nostalgic to me. For that reason, I will always love it. And because it's the Beatles, I will always love it. I think I made a pretty good argument to go back and listen to A Hard Day's Night. So you should go do that and comment and let me know what you think. I am so glad that you came and visited my land. I would absolutely love it if you would like, subscribe, comment, share all of that jazz. It helps me out a whole lot. And y'all come back now, you hear? Bye. My sweet Lord. Mm. Lord, Lord, but it takes so long, my Lord, my sweet.